Out of nowhere, she gets a knock on the door. When my mom opens up the door, the gentleman on the other end, he hands my mom these legal documents. She starts flipping through the pages, and then she realizes that the property is going to foreclosure. She picks up the phone and she calls them up. And she goes, Hello? We, oui, this is uh, Marie. Yes, I received the papers in the mail. It says that the property is going to foreclosure. But I don't understand. Every month I pay the landlord on time. Every month I pay him. I don't understand why the property is going to foreclosure. The lady on the line could tell that my mom sincerely did not understand what was going on. She said, Oh, Marie, even though you've been paying the landlord money every single month on time, the landlord has a mortgage. The mortgage is attached to the property. Because of that, the bank has the right to foreclose. And so, ma'am, the property is going to go to foreclosure. And so my mom asked her, do you think that maybe I can go to the foreclosure sale? Whoever buys the property, I will, uh, I will be a good tenant for them. I will stay in the property. I will, I will pay them the rent. Please, do you think that they will let me stay? And you know what the lady told my mom? She said, ma'am, it's not even worth you showing up. Whoever buys that property is not going to want to keep your little restaurant in there. So my mom was devastated. She's like, this is how I take care of my two boys. I got all my life savings into this property. And so about two weeks later, my mom says, you know what? I know that sometimes you don't just have to listen to what people tell you. My mom shows up to the foreclosure sale. She's expecting a room full of investors. But to her surprise, there's only two people there. The auctioneer and the representative from the bank. Now, before my mom could realize what's going on, the auctioneer steps up to the podium and says, Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start the bidding process on 540 West Atlantic Avenue. If you're here to bid on the property, please raise your hand. And so naturally, the representative from the bank is standing over here. She raises her hand. My mom, who had no intentions on bidding on the property, doesn't even know how this thing works. My mom decided to take an act of faith and raise her hand. The auctioneer said, very well, we're going to start the bidding process at 30000 Can I get a 30000 The representative from the bank is standing here says 30000 My mom's still in the game. No money. 35000 It gets over here to the bank. That bank says 36000 This goes on and on. Now they're in the 40s. Now they're in the 50s. Now they're in the 60s. Now they're in the 70s. It gets over here to the bank. That bank says 76000 Now, my mom's like, I might as well have some fun. I don't have any money anyway. We must be playing with some Monopoly money. And so my mom, attitude and all, my mom goes, 76,500. The representative, representative from the bank is standing here with a clip pad. She picks up the clip pad and she says nothing. The auctioneer's gotta keep the process going. He goes, 76,500 going once, no answer. He goes, 76,500 going twice, no answer. He goes 76,500 sold to who? My mom, the woman who had no intentions on bidding on the property. And so my mom is excited she won the bid. And then she's like, wait a second, I actually have to have the money? And so they told her, you got 30 days to come up with the money. And so my mom would go home. She pull out a notepad and she start writing down the names of all of her friends and all of her family members, one by one. And she would call them up and tell them the story. Some would lend her a thousand, some would lend her two thousand, some would lend her three thousand, some lend her four thousand, some lend her five thousand. And she's three days away, and she's still thirty thousand dollars short. My mom's thinking, maybe this isn't meant to be. And then her telephone rings, and it's her friend Evos. And when her friend calls her up, my mom says, he was, no, it's too late. I have three days. I still need $30,000. He was said, no, Marie, listen, I know you've been calling us, but me and my husband, we've been saving up money to buy a house. Uh, we heard you call us. We heard the voicemails. Right now, we've saved up $30,000. We prayed about it. We talked about it. And we want to lend you the $30,000. So my mom would go and get the money from Evos and all of her friends and all of her family members. And she would drive over to the bank and get a cashier's check. 
she would get back in the car, drive up to Palm Beach, look at that big, thick cashier's window with the little hole at the bottom. My mom would probably take that cashier's check and slide it through the little hole. And that day, my mom went from being the tenant to being the landlord, all because she was willing to show up. And so here's what I say to you. There are going to be times that you're going to be wondering, why should I keep showing up and working my business? Why should I keep picking up the phones and making the phone calls? Why should I keep fighting for my goals and fighting for my dreams? And what I want to remind you is that you got to show up for your life regardless of the circumstances. You got to show up in spite of the naysayers. You got to show up in spite of the conversation going on in your mind. You got to show up for your life. Because if you don't, if you don't, nobody else will.